All right, it's great to uh, have the mayor on the platform uh, with me, and uh, he was so gracious to uh, be able to respond uh, to our invitation and come here today. Welcome to Blackhawk Church. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Before uh, I uh, talk to the mayor, let me just, uh, for a second, mayor, let me just talk to uh, my people here uh, for just a second, because we're kind of known famously in our little community as not being political, and obviously, uh, this is a political person. So uh, some of you might like, what is happening right here? But uh, we view this as uh, not a political uh, moment. I don't view this as a political moment. The mayor doesn't view this as a political moment. Uh, we are about reaching our community. We love uh, the city of Madison. And actually, I can't think of anybody who knows more about the city of Madison than Mayor uh, Paul uh, Soglin. So we thought, wow, well, wouldn't it be a great opportunity if we could just email the mayor's office and see like, what do they think the needs are would there be anybody in the mayor's office be interested in addressing that? And then we heard back right away from him that he would actually be interested in addressing us. So we were real excited about that opportunity. So thank you again uh, for coming here. Thank you. And, and I think uh, you're absolutely correct. This, it's not a question of being political. It's a qu question of commitment and caring and dedication. Absolutely. So, uh, Mayor, let me just ask you, what do you feel like the needs are in our city right now? Well, let's, let's look at Madison. Um, last November, I made an observation. Some th people thought I had just spontaneously blurted it out, uh, that it was not a well thought out uh, remark. I said, Madison is not special. And before I go further into that comment, I just want to remind everyone that we are wrapping up Black History Month. And I'll return to that in a second. But Think about Madison, and I can certainly go back over many decades. And yes, while mayors are expected to be cheerleaders, what do we have? We have a Madison that was selected as an all-American city. Back in the days when Money Magazine only gave one award for the best city in the country, hmm. Madison received it. We're the best place for raising children. We're the best place for men's health. We're the best place for uh, an opportunity for women to build careers. Mm -hmm. We can go on and on about all of these awards that Madison has received and what it means to the people of our community. So why would I say we're not special? And it's this last month that would have been a good time to pull out To Kill a Mockingbird. And for those of you who know the book and have seen the movie or seen the play, you remember what Atticus says when he's counseling Scout. And he says to her that to understand a person, you have to walk around in their shoes. Right. Wow. Well, let's do that for a moment. In Madison, Wisconsin, during the course of a school year, 900 children in our public school at one point or another are without a home. We all know about the achievement gap, but let's not forget that we are the capital city in a state that has the greatest gap in terms of incarceration rate of white men and black men. We're in a state where it's far more likely to, that a black youth will end up in prison than will end up graduating from college. And among the 100 largest cities in the United States, we in Milwaukee are both in the top 10 in terms of another disparity study, which is the gap between poverty of white children and poverty of African American and Hispanic children. These are the realities of our community, and we must see it through the eyes of these children, these young men, these young women, who in some instances, while we're beginning to come out of this depression or recession, whichever you prefer, they're looking at 20 and 25% rates of unemployment. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, that is amazing. 
When uh, you think about uh, faith-based groups and nonprofit organizations like us, what is your attitude towards uh, faith-based groups like us, you know, uh, helping uh, partner with the city and trying to meet some of these needs? It's no longer a question of whether or not faith-based groups will participate in addressing these challenges. Mm. I don't think a modern city in this country will, prog will show progress and, and, and will be viable without that. Mm -hmm. Let me just mention in regards to our schools, three areas that need help and need attention and just ask ourselves, where could we be involved? Mm -hmm. First, one of the greatest impediments to children's development and learning is trauma. And we see trauma in two different ways. We see it in terms of hunger and we see it in terms of violence, whether it's in the home or it's in the neighborhood. And let's just stop with hunger for a second. Mm. If a child on Friday of last week who would be sitting here today received a free lunch in the free and reduced lunch program, ask yourself, what did that child do Friday night for dinner? What did that child do for three meals on Saturday? And by the way, how many of you can recall being eight or 10 or 12 years old and not getting through the afternoon without a snack. Hmm. Then came here this morning to Blackhawk without a breakfast. In terms of violence, I don't think we have to go any further than to recognize what we say about the men and women who serve this country and the syndromes and the stress they return with when they see violence in war. I attended Hyde Park High School in Chicago. We were part of the Blue Division on the South Side. Oh. One of the other high schools was Harper. There is going to be a PBS special this coming month on Harper High School. Last year, for this high school, 29 of their children or recent graduates were shot, eight of them were killed. This is wow. one high school. Wow, that's amazing. And it's not just about those children and their families. It's about everyone in their community who was a witness to that injustice and to that violence. There's a question of parental involvement. Sarah and I raised three girls. And I don't know how we did it. We're still working on it. <laughs> They're all in their 20s, isn't it? They're that right? all in their 20s, and believe me, we're still working on it. <laughs> and we had two cars. We were able somehow to get to the schools, to attend the parent-teacher conferences, to keep an eye on the other kids who were not the subject of the conferences that day. Imagine being a single parent without an automobile with a couple of kids, and now you've got to go to the parent-teacher conference. Who's giving you support? Who's watching your children? Who is helping in regards to the tutoring? Mm -hmm. Here's a new figure we learned just this week. Over the last decade, the amount of money that middle-class parents spend on what's referred to as out-of-school time and I saw some of the children from this congregation a half an hour ago downstairs, and they are getting out of school time. The amount of money that's spent by middle class parents is growing nine times greater hmm. than it is for low income families. Children are only spending 20% of their week in the classroom. The rest of it is with us and with their classmates. How valuable is that time to their growth? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, just listening to you speak, it just reminds me that uh, I'm often telling our folks here that the church is not a building, but it's people. And just listening to you, the city is really not a structure, it's not buildings, but it's people. And uh, you're just bringing to our attention all the people uh, that are in our city, the different kinds of folks that are. So as far as you're concerned, uh, there's plenty of room for faith-based groups to do all kinds of things in this city in terms of helping the people in this city? Well, fortunately, so many of you are already yeah. committed. Yeah. 
and, and, and that is something for which we, we are thankful. The commitment is genuine, the commitment is real, and from the thank you notes, we know it's appreciated. Yeah. We have to, in effect, spread that word, get more people involved, and I wanna say something about permanence. It can't be one time. Right. Children bond. If you're going to work with a child, an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, and by the way, there's so many venues to do it in. Right. Um, if you want an exciting opportunity to watch and observe, go to the South Madison Park Street Library, the Goodman Library, and watch the kids after school in the library with a new teen program that's been created. Mm -hmm. And don't you try and touch those machines. It's for the kids, okay? We're having a hard time keeping the adults <laughs> away the from these computers yeah, and yeah. these animation yeah. devices that, that we've put in. But go and watch and understand that a bond takes place. And that bond is not just the mathematics or the language. It is a relationship that that child needs and cherishes. Mm, absolutely. It uh, reminds me, too, of our relationship with the uh, Boys and Girls Club of uh, Dane County and all the great things that they are doing uh, there and, and uh, just an awesome organization. Mayor, let me ask you, uh, as we kind of wrap up things, how, uh, what, what advice would you give to us for how we can pray for the city? Well, I want to go back to, to really where we started, but let's change our view of the city. For example not counting the private and the religious schools, Madison children attend eight different school systems, mm -hmm. not just the city of Madison, but Middleton Cross Plains, Sun Prairie, there's others. At the same time, there are eight different communities that send their children to the Madison public schools, which includes parts of Fitchburg and Maple Bluff and Shorewood and, and um, other, the town of Madison. And I guess the most important thing is to drop the boundaries hmm. and come to realize that we're all interconnected. Because one of my greatest frustrations is I may be mayor of the city of Madison, hmm. but there's no wall that either contains our problems, there should be no walls that hold back our success. Wow. Amen. That is excellent. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming.